uh, once again in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our soon coming King. Praise the name of the Lord. Yes, this is us once again on Radio Chris Cadbury, bringing you the Word of God. The Word of God is the most important thing that we have today in life. It's the only thing that doesn't change. Solid foundation that does not change. Every day in society we hear ch about changes in the world, changes the way things are actually done, but the Word of God never changes. Please also in your prayers remember Radio Chris Cabri, the station that God will bless it. So anyway, we're moving on to a little bit of further ado. We're moving on to lesson number 36. And we're talking about the crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus Christ. The crucifixion and resurrection <coughs> of Jesus Christ. Please do bear in mind that we are teaching on a totally biblical basis. Um, we use the King James Version Bible. Now the teaching that you hear here today may not line up with teaching or may not coincide with teaching you, you you've been taught in the past it may and it may not but we're bringing it from a totally biblical stand um, not teaching tradition here but basically the word of God praise the name of the Lord so without further ado let's move on thank you uh, lesson 36 crucifixion and resurrection of Christ Jesus and question number one asks what sign did Jesus give as evidence of his messiahship? You know, Jesus gave Jesus gave a mighty and great sign of his messiahship. He really, really did. Mighty and great sign of his messiahship. Um, Jesus, <laughs> hallelujah, uh, to prove that he was King of Kings and Lord of Lords and who he actually said he was. Jesus did not use the signs or any of the miracles that he did as a sign of his messiahship no he didn't he gave one specific sign that would prove that he is messiah in other words the king of the jews in other words saint directly from god in other words come to save us from our sins and that's answered in matthew chapter 12 verse 38 to 40 and it reads then certain of the scribes and of the pharisees answered saying master we will see a sign from thee but he answered and said unto them an evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign and there shall no sign be given to it but the sign of the prophet jonas for as jonas was three days and three nights in the well's belly so shall the son of man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth so the sign that Jesus Christ our Messiah gave to prove his authenticity was that he be in the grave or, praise the name of the Lord, in the heart of the earth, that means dead and buried, for three days and for three nights. But no more than that. Praise the name of the Lord. It, I mean, you can't get a greater miracle than that. Someone who actually prophesies their own death and resurrection because that's what he was talking about it's i'm going to give you a sign that i'm the messiah and the sign is this i'm going to be dead and i'm going to be buried and i'm going to be in the heart of the earth for three days and three nights then after that i'm going to come up bring myself up and that's the sign i'm giving but another key point i'd also like to um hone in on that scripture brother here on is this many particularly in our society today Many people seek after signs, they seek after wonders yes. as proof that God is God. But Jesus said an evil and adulterous generation, he said an, an evil, an evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign. And there shall no sign be given to it but the sign of the prophet Jonas. So Jesus is saying here that it's evil people and adulterous people that always wants proof of God's existence. That always wants proof that, that, that Jesus is who he said he is. You know, Jesus said to Doubting Thomas after his resurrection, Blessed is he who has not seen and yet believes. God wants us to believe without having to have all these miraculous, mighty signs and mighty wonders. God wants us to believe in him because he says who he is. Amen? Yes. Praise the name of the Lord. And I think a lot of us need to take that into consideration when we're going around asking the Lord to give us a sign. 
looking for signs. Praise the name of the Lord. Let's continue on. Praise the Thank name you. of the Lord. Question number two. Was Jonah actually three days and three nights in the fish's belly? Jonah 1 verse 17. Jonah 1 verse 17. All quotes being taken from the King James Version of the Bible. And it reads, Now the Lord had, uh, had prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. And in actual fact, when you actually read the account of Jonah, he actually died. He talks about going down to the gates of hell. He actually died and came up. He died. He was, Jonah actually died. And that's why Jesus Christ himself uses the sign of the prophet Jonah. Just as how Jonah was dead for three days and three nights, they came back to life and God commanded the world to spit him out in Nineveh. Even so, Jesus will die and come up again. When you read Jonah's um, testimony, as Jonah speaks of his experience in the fish's belly, you realize that Jonah wasn't alive in there, he had died. Probably suffocated due to lack of oxygen or drowned. Praise the name of the Lord. But you need to actually read that yourself on God, because we, I, I, not on that topic tonight, and I really do not have time to actually go through that scripture. So do have a look at John and see, see his experience in the world's baby. I praise the name of the Lord. Uh, question number three. <clears throat> How long did Jesus say that he would be in the grave? Matthew chapter 12 and verse 40. Uh, praise the name of the Lord. Once again, and it reads, For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the world's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. So here Jesus is saying he would be in the heart of he be in the grave for three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. So three days and three nights. So a, a, a day is a a day and the night is accounted as a twenty four hour period. Is that correct? That's correct? And Jesus has specifically said he'd be in the heart of the earth three days and three nights. Now many people, or in Christendom, is generally believed that Jesus Christ died on Good Friday and rose on Sunday morning. Mm. But if you do the maths, I mean a five-year-old could actually do the maths. If you do the maths, you'll find out um, Friday evening, about six, between 6 and 9 p.m., and Sunday morning does not make three days and three nights. It does not make three days and three nights. Count it out yourself. Add, out, add it up. And Jesus specifically saying may be dead for three days and three nights. But we're going to unravel something for you today that probably you've never ever heard today and bring your faith in God to a higher level. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Question number four. On what day did Jesus rise from the grave? Matthew 28 verse 1 through to 6 answers that. It says, on what day did Jesus rise from the grave? Um, now, traditionally, it's held that Jesus rose on what day? Uh, Sunday. Sunday, traditionally. traditionally. But let's see what the Bible actually, because you see, the Bible speaks for itself. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, Matthew 28, verses 1 through to 6. And I'm going to read that. Heon, you got a little bit of sniffles today, so I'm going to please on you this evening. Thank you. Uh, in the end of the Sabbath, now the Sabbath, uh, some people believe it to be Sunday, some... And another arm of Christianity believes it to be Saturday. But here it is. In the end of the Sabbath, but we know that the Bible Sabbath is Saturday. Going back to Genesis chapter 2. Genesis chapter 1, I do apologize. In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary. So you see, in the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene, and the other Mary to see the sepulchre and behold there was a great earthquake for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stones from the door and sat upon it his countenance was like lightning and his raiment white as snow and for fear of him the keepers did shake and became as dead men and the angel answered and said unto the woman, Fear not, for I know that ye seek Jesus, which was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen, as he said. Come see the place where the Lord lay. 
So you can see that it says, in the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn towards the first day of the week, came me. So, so, so this is early Sunday morning. A Sunday morning. Remember, that, always remember and take this, take this bit of advice. The dark part of a day, of, of a day is not day, it's that night. And the, the bright side of a day is day. You see, and now when the Bible talks about the Sabbath day, it's not talking about Sabbath night, it's talking about day. Day is day and night. There's a distinct difference in the Bible between day and night. That's right. Day, if you look in Genesis, right, so the day, day is always called the light part yeah. in Genesis, mm -hmm. and the night is always called the dark part. Because there's a lot of confusion around when, when does the day start, but the Bible makes it clear the day starts with the bright part and ends with the dark part. Day is first and then the night follows the day. Night follows day. See? Now, in the end of the Sabbath, that's, um, as it back, that, that's Saturday night to early Sunday morning. Yes? As it began to dawn towards the first day of the week. Now, dawn means it's getting bright, not getting dark. Dawn means, the, the, the dawn period means the sun is coming up, you see? As it began to dawn towards the first day of the week. Now, what is the first day of the week? Sunday. Sunday. Now, many people believe Sunday is the seventh day of the week, but if you check any calendar, either the, the Romy, Rom, the, 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 the Gregarian. Gregarian, or the the Roman calendar, mm -hmm. you'll find that Sunday has always been the first day of the week, and Saturday has always been the seventh day of the week, and Saturday has always been spoken of. Anywhere the Sabbath is mentioned in the Bible, it always refers to Saturday. So it says, in the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn towards the first day of the week, in other words, as, as Sunday began to come in, Sunday had not come in yet, but the sun was rising, it was probably maybe five o'clock, four or five o'clock in the morning, that they've, um, Sunday, um, Saturday night going into Sunday morning, they've, they've gone to the sepulchre. Because remember, in the Middle East, in those type of countries, the sun rises early. So from about five o'clock, it's bright. So it would probably been about 4.30, they've gone down to the sepulchre, just as the sun's coming up and they can actually see. Now they've gone there, gone there then, and when they go there, Jesus Christ is not in the tomb. He is risen. So if he's already risen and not there, it means he's risen before Sunday came in. Because it was dawning towards the first of the week. So it looks like he rose on the Sabbath, sometime on the Sabbath, yes. or on the end of the, or on the, end of the Sabbath. Yes. Somewhere around the end of the, the Sabbath, Saturday, Sabbath day, or towards the end of the Sabbath when he's rose up. Because when they've gone there to the tomb, the, the, the followers of Jesus, uh, just as it was coming, it was getting light, the sun was just coming, it was getting light, he was already risen, as the angel says in Matthew 26, uh, in Matthew 28, verse 1 to 6. I mean, you can read it yourself and see what the Bible says, because the Bible, let the Bible speak for itself. Now, no, this visit was made to the tomb in the end of the Sabbath. Yes? Yeah? The end of the Sabbath. Now, Jesus had already risen. So his resurrection was in the end of the Sabbath. Or, in other words, before the Sabbath had fully ended. As it began to dawn, it dawn towards the first day of the week means the sun rising. I mean, ask any scholar when dawn is. Dawn is not when it's going down. Sunset is when it's okay. going down. Dawn is when the sun is coming up to bring in a new day. I began to dawn towards the, 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 the first day of the week. Right? He was already, so as you can see, Jesus has rose either on the Saturday or towards the end of the Saturday. That's when he rose from the day. Because as Sunday was coming and hadn't yet come in, uh, he was already gone and risen. Okay? Let's continue. Question number five. On every subsequent visit, did the disciples find the body of Jesus? Now let's look at the subsequent visits um, to, 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 to the woman, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary. Now Mary Magdalene was who? Uh, the woman that was caught in adultery. Praise the name of the Lord. Who the Lord uh, sorry, in her credentials she washed the Lord's hair, her feet with her hair. And the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. And the other Mary, and the other Mary, probably not. I think it would have been the, the woman out of whom Jesus cast 
several devils, seven devils out of that many. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. It could well have been her. But nevertheless, on every subsequent... Oh, sorry, sorry, could you read the question again, please, sir? Yes, I can. On every subsequent visit, did the disciples find the body of Jesus? All right, Mark 16, verse 1 to 6, and it reads, And when the Sabbath was passed, and when the Sabbath was passed, that Saturday had gone, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, and so Salome, have brought sweet spices that they may come, that they might come and anoint him. And very early in the morning, very early in the morning, the first day of the week, they came onto the sepulchre at the rising of the sun. See, the sun is rising, it's beginning to go into the, into the first of the week, at the rising of the sun. And they said among themselves, who shall roll us away the stone from the door of the sepulchre? And when they looked, they saw that the stone was rolled away. For it was very great, probably a ten ton stone or something. Um, because the soldiers were trying to prevent Jesus, well, the, not the soldiers, but the scribes and religious leaders, scribes and Pharisees, etc., etc., were doing their utmost to prevent Jesus from coming out of the tomb. So they put a massive stone there because they knew that he said he was going to rise from the dead. So just in case the disciples could go and steal the body, they put a guard of soldiers there, sent soldiers down there to guard it, and a massive stone. So even if the soldiers managed, even if the disciples managed to knock the soldiers out or get them out of the way, which would be more likely, they'd have difficulty rolling the stone away. So they really sealed, sealed him in. Um, so, so anyway, they came onto the sepulchre at the rising of the sun. And they said among themselves, Who shall roll us away the stone from the door of the sepulchre? And when they looked, they saw that the stone was rolled away, for it was very great. And entering into the sepulchre, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in long white garments, and they were affrighted. And he said unto them, Be not affrighted, Ye seek Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. Behold the place where he lay. So another account is that they've gone very early in the morning. Yeah? Yes. Um, the first day of the week. They came to the sepulchre at the rising of the sun. You see, the sun is rising. So again, it matches them in the other account. The sun is actually rising. It's not fully risen up in his eye, but it's rising to bring in the sun there. And when they go there, He's not there, he's already gone. You see? Also, Luke 24, verses 1 through to 3, and it reads, Now upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came unto the sepulchre, bringing the spices which they had prepared, and certain others with them. And they found the stone, and they found the stone rolled away from the sepulchre, and they entered, in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. So they've come here again the first day of the week, which is Sunday. They've gone there very early in the morning, bringing spices which they had prepared because they're waiting until it's just beginning to light so they can see. Yes. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulchre. So very early, Sunday morning, it's coming Sunday morning, the stone's already rolled away and he's gone. So where Christendom generally says, well, he rose on Sunday, there is no biblical evidence for that. Because when the disciples and his followers went there, as it began to dawn towards the first of the week, or very early Sunday morning, as Sunday morning is coming in, he's already gone, he's risen, he's gone already. Amen. Also, according to the scripture, yes. Also, John 20, St. John chapter 20, verse 1 and 2. And it reads, the first day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene early, when it was yet dark, you see, the first day of the week, when it was yet dark, because the sun's just rising, you see, onto the sepulchre, and see if the stone taken away from the sepulchre. Then she runneth and cometh to Simon Peter, and to the other disciple, whom Jesus loved, and saith unto him, They have taken away the Lord out of the sepulchre, and we know not where they have laid him. Peter therefore went forth, and the other disciple, and came to the sepulchre. Now, there were several visits to the tomb by the same persons and others at different times and, 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 and on the diverse circumstances. 
Thus the gospel writers do not contradict each other, but various people went at different times and under different circumstances. So some has gone, gone as it began to dawn towards the first day of the week, ending of the Saturday, Saturday dawn towards the Sunday. Some have gone very early Sunday morning because they were waiting for the Saturday Sabbath to, to, to finish. But every single one of them, and as soon as the, the, the Saturday Sabbath was finishing, they ran out because they wanted to anoint his yes. body. And as we know, on the Sabbath, you're not supposed to do industrial or manual work. So they didn't want to be anointing the dead on the Sabbath and rubbing his body down because that's what they came to do. So they waited until the Sabbath was just about break over, going into the first of the week to, to, to get ready to do it. And But when they went there, each one of them, he had he was already gone. So we have different... Um, People, disciples, different people going to the sepulchre at various different times, but all of them are saying the same thing. They all went either as it began to dawn towards the first of the week, as Saturday night was just going out and Sunday morning coming in, or they went very early Sunday morning and he was already gone. He was already risen. So the evidence here suggests that Jesus did not rise on the Sunday, from the dead on Sunday, but he rose Saturday um, night. Or <laughs> Saturday night all oh, Saturday during the day, but sometime around then. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the question number six. Did they believe that he had risen from the dead? Now, Luke 24, verse 11. And their words seemed to them as idle tales, and they believed them not. So as, as various people have gone down to the tomb and seen him risen, and they've gone back to the disciples and said that Jesus Christ is risen. They, they didn't believe that he had risen. Also, Luke 16, also verse 16 um, from Luke 24 reads, But their eyes were holden that they should not know him. That's on the road to Emmaus. They didn't realize, you know, because after the terrible crucifixion, the disciples found it hard to believe that anybody could survive that. Let's not be walking alive again. They just couldn't believe it. It was shocking. So, but their eyes were holding that they should not know him. Also, um, verse 22 of Matthew 24 reads, Yea, and certain woman also of our company made us astonished, which, which were early at the sepulchre. They were astonished because they heard the news that he wasn't there. So they were surprised. They said, How can he be not there? There's Roman soldiers out there. There's a ten ton stone blocking the, the entrance to the tomb. He can't be gone. You see, mm -hmm. they didn't believe. Yeah. Also, um, verse 41 of the same scripture of Matthew 24. And it reads, And while they yet believed not for joy, and while they yet believed not for joy, and wondered, he said unto them, Have ye here any meat? So even when the risen Jesus appeared to them, they still didn't believe. They thought they were literally thought they were hallucinating. Hallucinating. But they've never seen Anything. Even though Jesus prior to that had actually told the disciples and told them that he was going to rise from the dead. That he would rise from the dead. You see? Yeah. So even though Jesus said, I, I, I am going to rise from the dead, I will rise from the dead. They, they didn't comprehend, they just couldn't believe it. And it's, it's many a times, brother, you know, a lot of the things that the Lord has told us. About heaven, this cue boy, the new Jerusalem coming down as a cue boy. Um... The, 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 you know, the, 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 the size, 186,000 miles, high, something like that, but, you know, and why, the, the size of it and, 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 and all what the scriptures actually say in connection with, with, with what God has given us. I believe that when it actually comes around, many of us will be, just like how uh, the disciples and his followers were that believed him, will be struck dumb in awe. Because even though we hear it, sometimes, some of the things we hear that the Lord tells us is beyond human comprehension. Yeah. But it will happen. Yeah. What God says he will do, he will do. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because you know the gospel is true. And you know something? I've been thinking, there are a lot, a lot of people who put a lot into the gospel ministry. And they get very little down here on earth in comparison to what they put in. But you know, their reward will be very, very great in heaven. That's true. It will be extremely great. And when they get to heaven, or go, go to the new earth, whichever they're going to they're gonna say, Lord, is this all mine? Is all this wealth mine? I can't believe it. I just don't believe it. Look at my mansion. No, I can't believe it. The, the Lord say, yes, but I did say it in the scripture. I, I did say it there. I just, I, yes, you said, Lord, but I just can't believe it. I, the Bible does say, I have not seen, now that it is heard, now that it entered into the heart of man, the things that God has prepared for them that love him. 
and I believe that when we get into the new Jerusalem, I think we're going to be all in struck in awe and wonder at what we're going to, at our reward and what we're going to receive. Because you know, every single thing a, an individual, a person, man, woman, boy, child does for the Lord, there's a reward for it. Every single thing, every single thing. That's why the Bible says that whatever we do, we should do it. Whatever we do <coughs> in word or deed, do in the name of Jesus, because that's where your reward comes. And, all, and whatever we actually do in this life, whether it's at work or, or at home, at school, at play, and we're doing it as though we're doing it unto the Lord, as it says in the book of James, we are doing it unto the Lord and we also get a heavenly reward. So as well as getting earthly pay, we'll also be getting a heavenly reward. Because we're storing up our riches and our treasures in heaven. Isn't that something to look for? So the fact of the matter is, we might be poor down here on earth, but we'll be exceedingly rich and wealthy up there. You know, many times we probably say, Lord, make me rich. I, I, you know, and there's such a temptation. And I'm sure there's people out there who think to themselves, oh, I need to do the lottery. I need to do something because I love God so much. I need to just to get that money and I could free myself. But no, God has a reward for us. He has a reward for us. And he has a big reward. But <coughs> the, our reward is not of the things of this world it's going to be in the kingdom of god that's where our reward is going to be many times god promises us a big job but we don't realize that the job he's talking about is not a job here on this side of jordan it's on the others it's in the new jerusalem it's in his city where he appoints us a place and work there you understand and our rewards there. that's what the lord is referring to remember this jesus clearly said the flesh profiteth little it is the spirit that quickens him. Amen? Amen. And the Lord is more interested in the spirit of a man and his spiritual flesh. things than carnal. I yeah. praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Question number seven. Continue, please. Do you think then that when the disciples were gathered together on the first day of the week, they were celebrating the resurrection as some say? So, could you read that again, please? Do you think, yes, question number seven, do you think then that when the disciples were gathered together on the first day of the week they were celebrating the resurrection as some say. Well let's look and see what the Bible, what the scriptures say um, say on this. John chapter 20, St. John chapter 20 and verse 19 and it reads Then the same day at even being the first day of the week when the doors were shut um, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews came Jesus and stood in the midst and said unto them peace be unto you praise the name of the Lord so here it, so the question was is do I do 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 I think or do you think do I think that when the disciples were gathered together on the first day of the week they were celebrating the resurrection as some say well the scripture says in John 20 verse 19 then the same day at even, it wasn't in the day, it was evening, they were, they were here, and they were not celebrating, they were hiding for their lives in fear, because of fear of the Jews. That's what, it That's what they were doing. Yeah. It said, then, the, the same day at even, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, yeah. so they were there hiding. Yeah. Because you see, when Jesus was around, they were, <laughs> they were like lions, they were going around healing, raising the dead kicking demons out, doing all kinds of different things. And Peter, he was so bold, had the biggest, you know, he really could put himself forward yeah, when Jesus was around. Big heart and so forth. And he, and he was, took a sword <laughs> in front of the soldiers and cut somebody's ear off and they came to, to, to arrest Jesus. Because they knew the power that was in Jesus. But as soon as Jesus is gone, they've locked, they're in hiding and they've locked themselves away the for fear of the Jews. Yeah. So they were assembled there for fear of the Jews, not there celebrating Jesus' <laughs> Resurrection. They were timid and frightened yeah. that they were going to be taken and crucified as well. So they were hiding. Yeah. <laughs> it says, when several for fear of the Jews came, Jesus and stood in the midst and said unto them, Peace be unto you. Now, the, the very fact that Jesus said, Peace be unto you, means that they were worried. They were afraid. So Jesus came and brought them peace. I said, Peace be unto you. So, there's, in other words, there's no more need to worry. Have peace. Have faith. Don't worry. That's wonderful because it also reminds me of this scripture where many have testified that mm. the Lord Jesus Christ has done exactly mm. when Pastor John said the week where the Lord came and stood. Yeah. I said the, the scriptural credential is yeah. there. You know, yeah. the Lord, he doesn't deviate from scripture. No, he doesn't. So that which he did there, 
Yeah. It's perpetual. So mm -hmm. we can expect things like that. Now we're practicing the testimony. Yeah. But the Lord has come in this day and age and stood mm -hmm. and spoken to people about his will or this or whatever the case might be. Yeah. And I just marvel that he did the same thing there and comforted his disciples. That's brilliant. So so it's conclusive that we're not celebrating his resurrection but we're in high. <laughs> I don't know if that's Jesus crucified. I don't know if that's what Jesus said. And Jesus was there, obviously. And he was he was used as a public example. Yes. Or set up as a public yes. example. And they were thinking, there's no way it would be our snake. Yes. We better hide and stay away. Because any other Jews can't just get us. They're going to want to put end to, to our set, to this new set. Or to the new faith that had risen there. They would want to put an end to it and kill us all so we better hide. But, and that's why Jesus said, stay in Jerusalem, until told them before he, when he was setting up, that they should stay in Jerusalem until they had been Jewed with power from, from an hour. But that's another teaching of the baptism of the Holy mm -hmm. Ghost. Yeah. And then after they received the baptism of the Holy Ghost, they were no longer hiding. They came out boldly oh, yeah. in the open. Yeah. And that shows, that's why today, particularly in today's society, God's people, the people of God need to spend more time praying for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Because I'm telling you something, what we've got to put up with now, as Christians, due to legislation that's passed and being passed, and going through and being discussed, there are a lot of things that are against the Christian man and yes. the Christian woman, or boy or girl, or, boy or, girl, yes. or, or baby, yes. or anybody who's so-called or elderly man or elderly woman. There's a lot of things against us now, and unless we have the power of the Holy Ghost with us, we're not going to be able to effect effectively function. So Christian people, God, the people of God, need to pray for more power of the Holy Ghost upon their lives today. I'm quite amazed because they were actually having a vote, I won't go deep into this, over a certain new legislation that was coming in during the House of Parliament this week. Yeah. And I was watching it on, <laughs> on, on, watching it on Sky, and there was a chat, Christians that carrying a banner, and you know, saying what it was, and it was shouting, REPENT! REPENT! And it went, when the people, uh, you know, the, the the news team were there, basically trying to speak, he was shouting, he was over the race, repent, repent, with his banners on his back, on his back, back. And, and it's, you know, and, but to do something like that, you have to have the Holy that's Spirit. power holy, you must have yeah, the yeah. Holy Spirit, because Jesus, that's why Jesus said, wait in Jerusalem, tarry in Jerusalem, until you be endued with power from on high. Because you see, when the disciples received the baptism of the Holy Ghost, they were no longer in hiding, my friend. Yeah, okay. They came out open, and Peter was cowering away with the others, became the spokesman. Yes. And, later, and later on you find that Stephen, um, which was one of their deacons, which were chosen in there, they checked, under the power and the influence of the Holy Ghost, he was not afraid to die for yes, the Lord, to speak up and die. And I tell you something, those Christians in the early church had big persecution. They had a bitter persecution. Yes, they had the Romans against them, yes, who, were, who saw themselves as gods and emperors and, and those emperor worship of, uh, worship of Roman officials. They had the Jews against them as, uh, as well. And then there are people, just general people in society who are also against them, who are spreading rumours against them, and who started with the Jews and the Romans. So they had nobody on their side. Amen. And in the end they had to collect together in little communities by themselves. Sell all the goods, give it to each other, and just disperse and go. They were under heavy persecution, but the Lord gave them the power. And that's why I said in these last days, the people of God need to pray fervently that God will baptize us with the power of the Holy Spirit and that the Holy Spirit will come upon us in an unprecedented way to give us power to stand in these last evil times because otherwise none of us will be able to stand True. praise the name of yes, the Lord yes. hallelujah hallelujah continue let's continue yes, um, uh, question number Continue, please. Is it not plainly stated that Jesus was resurrected on the Sabbath and crucified on the Jewish preparation day? So, is it not plainly stated that Jesus was resurrected on the Sabbath and crucified on the Jewish preparation day? Okay, Matthew 28, because the Jewish preparation day, there were two Sabbaths that, that week. Yes. There was a Sabbath which was on about the Thursday and there was a Friday Sabbath. Yeah. Um, and and the, what, what we're going to discover is that the scripture say was crucified before the Thursday Sabbath, which was the Day of Atonement, where a sacrificial lamb would be offered. He was crucified one day before that because 
the Jewish people could not get involved in that type of activity on a high day. So they did it one day before. But let's see. Now, uh, Matthew 28, verses 1 through to 6, and it reads, In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulchre. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. His countenance was like lightning and his raiment white as snow. And for fear of him, the keepers did shake and became as dead men. And the angel answered and said unto the woman, Fear not ye, for he I know that ye seek Jesus, which was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen, as he said. Come see the place where the Lord lay. Um, there laid they Jesus, oh praise the name of the Lord. And also John 19, 42. There laid they Jesus. Therefore, because of the Jews' preparation day, for the sepulchre was nigh at hand. So it was a Jews' preparation day that he was actually crucified on. Because there were two Sabbaths in that week, the Friday Sabbath, Friday, you know, because the Jews hold the Sabbath, Friday sunset to Saturday sunset. But I could, I don't want to go into that here. Mm -hmm. And then there was also the Thursday Sabbath, which was a high day. And that was to do with the Day of Atonement, which happened once a year, where a lamb would be slain for the sins of the whole nation. So, so, so they didn't want they didn't crucify Jesus on the Day of Atonement because the Jews are not allowed to put anybody to death or, or to carry out crucifixions on that day. So, what they did, they crucified him on the Wednesday, the preparation day for the Thursday Sabbath or High Day, which was the Day of Atonement, where a sacrifice of a lamb will be, will be sacrificed for the sins of the whole world. Hold of the whole nation. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Thank you. Question number nine. What day followed this preparation day? Sorry? What day followed this preparation day? John St. John chapter 19 verse 31. And it reads, The Jews therefore, because it was the preparation that the body should not remain upon the cross on the sabbath day for that sabbath day was a high day that's a day of atonement the once a year um time when the priest the high priest would go into the most holy place and would intercede for the sins of the people yeah so i'm going to read that again the jews therefore because it was the preparation that the body should not remain upon the, the cross on the sabbath day for that Sabbath was on high day. Besought Pilate that they besought Pilate that their legs might be broken. Yeah, besought Pilate that their leg sorry. Yeah, besought Pilate that their legs might be broken and that they might be taken away. And also um, St. John eighteen verse twenty eight. It is then led they Jesus from Caiaphas unto the hall of judgment and it was early and they themselves went not into the judgment hall lest they should be defiled but that they might eat the Passover because the following day was a Passover and they were to keep themselves clean a certain amount of days and sanctified yes. physically a certain amount a certain time before the Passover day so, so to prevent themselves being uh, defiled during that time period as well to give us a bit they didn't enter into the hall of judgment yeah into the judgment hall yeah. or want to get involved in it that's why they handed over to the Romans to do mm. yeah it was a high Sabbath and third, that third there was a devil told me. so they were dealing with Jesus on the way they wanted to get it done before the third because they had to go on off the, the land the sack of the high priest were going calf as the high priest was since then he going to, to they, they'd offer a land for the whole nation and so forth and then he'd go to the most holy place on that Thursday to seek God for the sins of the and ask God for forgiveness of the sins of the nation. So they wanted to get the crucifixion out of the way so on the Thursday they'd be free to do that. But they wanted to ensure that Jesus died to get him out of the way because they saw him as a problem. Praise the name of the Lord. Let's continue. Praise the Lord. Question number 10. 
was the second day of the Passover a Sabbath, no matter on what day of the week it came. So I read that again. Was the second day of the Passover a Sabbath, no matter on what day of the week it came. Let's have a look at this scripture, this is what the scripture says. Leviticus chapter 23, verses 5 through to 10. And it reads, In the fourteenth day of the first month, at even, is the Lord's Passover. And on the fifteenth day of the same month is the feast of unleavened bread unto the Lord. Seven days ye must eat unleavened bread. In the first day ye shall have an holy convocation. Ye shall do no servile work therein. But ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord seven days. In the seventh day is an holy convocation. Ye shall do no servile work therein. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, When ye be come into the land which I give unto you, and shall reap the harvest thereof, then ye shall bring a sheaf of the first fruits of your harvest unto the priest. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, so the question was, was the second day of the Passover a Sabbath? And the answer is yes. Because they've had the a Passover with, 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 with the lamb with the sacrifice, the, 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 the priest carpets at that time were going to the most holy place to talk about God to forgive the sins of the nation. And then the Bible said the first day, yeah, in the first day of, the, you shall have no, and on the, okay, it said, in the first day you shall have a holy conv convocation, and that's the first day after the, the Sabbath, after the Passover. And then also have another holy convocation on the seventh day, yeah, that's the, that's the, the, the days of unleavened bread, yeah. Right. So yes, there are two, so, so it would be a Sabbath after a Sabbath. So that, Thursday was a Passover, Sabbath. The Friday was also a Sabbath again, yeah? A seventh day Sabbath, but also, uh, also classed as a high day because it followed on from the, because it actually followed on from the Passover Sabbath. So, yeah, yeah, the, the, yeah in fact, yeah, technically speaking, you had three Sabbaths that, that week. You had the Passover Sabbath, which was on a Thursday, then on the Friday evening, you had the Jewish Sabbath starting in the evening. But you also had the first John 11 bread on that day, which was also classified as a Sabbath, a holy convocation, okay, holy convocation, a day of rest on which God commanded no work should be done. Yeah? So it was a very special week, praise the name of the Lord. Now, Jesus was crucified on the preparation of the Passover Sabbath, not the weekly Sabbath. John 19 verse 31 makes it quite clear and I read the Jews therefore because it was the preparation that the body should not remain upon the cross they're talking about Jesus body and the thieves that were crucified beside him for that Sabbath day was a high day besought Pilate that their legs might be broken and that they might be taken away but of course they did not break Jesus legs as it says in the psalm and um, not a bones in his body will be broken. Speaking about his crucifixion. But when they saw he was already dead, they took a sword, a Roman soldier took a sword and spared his side with a sword. And out of his side flowed up blood on water. So that Roman soldier would have been saturated in blood on water. That flowed out of Jesus' side. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Continue. Praise the name of Question the Lord. Number 11. When did they buy the spices to embalm his body? Mark 16 and verse 1 and it reads and when the Sabbath was passed Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome had brought sweet spices that they might come and anoint him so it says the question was when did they buy the spices to embalm his body because you see they the, the, after Jesus Christ was was crucified they didn't because the procedure then this is coming all the way back from Egypt, the embalming. Um, and it spread throughout the whole of the Middle East. The um, embalming was all about prepare, um, preserving the bodies for the afterlife. That's what it basically was about. So, because it was the preparation of the Sabbath, and they didn't have time because this, Jesus died about the ninth hour, six and the ninth hour also. 
It's between the six and the ninth hour he died. That's when it's getting dark. So they had no time to buy spices then to prepare because it was dark and it was not the left to see to do the body properly. So what they took in us, what they did, they waited until after the Sabbath was passed. It says, and when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, have brought sweet spices that they might come and anoint him. In other words, <laughs> they brought this, <laughs> it means they brought this piece by, not purchased, that means brought this piece by the tube. Let's continue on, let's continue on. Okay, question number 12. When did they prepare the spices? Luke 23, verse 54 and 55. When did they prepare the spices? And that day was the preparation, and the Sabbath drew on. And the woman also, which came with him from Galilee, followed after and beheld the sepulchre and how his body was laid. And they returned and prepared spices and ointments and rested the Sabbath day according to the commandment. So they've gone sometime between the time of after that um, Thursday. So they've probably gone out and brought it Friday during the day and then rested the Saturday Sabbath and then gone out. Yeah? Praise, praise the Lord. Now Mark tells us, now, now Mark tells us that they brought the spices after the Sabbath, after the Sabbath. They're talking about the, 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 the Sabbath. And Luke says they prepared the spices before the Sabbath. How could they prepare the spices before the Sabbath and not buy them until after the Sabbath if there was only one Sabbath day in that week? Now the answer is, they brought and prepared the spices after the Passover Sabbath, which was two Sabbaths that week, technically speaking. So they brought and prepared the spices after the Passover Sabbath, and the day before the weekly Sabbath, yeah? This clears up the apparent contradiction, and, and also gives us the date of his crucifixion. So I'm going to read that again. They brought and prepared the spices after the Passover Sabbath, so it would be about a Friday, yeah? And before the weekly Sabbath, the Jewish Sabbath, how they hold it, Friday evening to Saturday, yeah? This clears up the apparent contradiction and also gives us the day of his crucifixion. Praise the name of the Lord. Thank you. Question number 13. When was Jesus crucified then? Daniel 9, verse 27. Yes, there are many inferences to Jesus' crucifixion, the exact time when Jesus will be crucified in the Old Testament. It's all over the scriptures. Daniel 9, verse 27, and it reads, And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. And in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. And we're going to end there. In the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. Middle of the week. Matthew 27 verse 45 reads Now from the sixth hour there was darkness all over the land unto the ninth hour. Yeah? Mark 15 25 And it says And it was the third hour and they crucified him. Third hour and they crucified him. He died about, I believe about the sixth hour and there was darkness and then he died. Three hours after they crucified him he died. And there was darkness from there. Six to the ninth hour, but in effect, I don't know, Mike, yeah, and that's why it's why the swords were quite surprised it died so quickly, because normally the crucifixion, they, you know, they they crucify, yeah. they, they, they make a slow, painful death, so a slow, painful death, so uh, they were amazed that he had actually died so quickly. Also, uh, Mark fifteen twenty five, and it reads, and it was the third hour, and they crucified him. Yeah, third hour. John 19 verse 14 and it reads and it was the preparation of the Passover and about the sixth hour and he said unto the Jews behold your king so from that we can place quite confident it was the middle of the week a Wednesday when he died before um, before the, the third that the high Sabbath which was on a Thursday and if you count Wednesday the sixth hour till, till Saturday uh, early, uh, late Saturday night, early Saturday morning, you get your three days and your three nights. If you count Wednesday night, Thursday night, Friday night, that's three nights, yeah? 
I make out Thursday, Friday, Saturday, that's three days of three nights in the heart of the air. So the Bible, if you look at the Bible carefully, you'll find that the Bible is correct. Jesus did was not crucified on Good Friday as many believe he was. And raised on Sunday morning. No, it doesn't that, 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 that give you three days and three nights. He was crucified in the middle of the week as it says in Daniel 9, 27. The day before the high Passover, it was a high Passover that week, which would have been, a, and the high Passover was a Thursday, and he was crucified the day before that, which was a Wednesday, and he rose at the ending of the Sabbath, and he began to dawn towards the first day of the week. When they went, he was already done. God. So obviously he rose on Saturday. And that will make exactly three days and three nights in the heart of death, as Jesus said he would have done. Praise the name of the Lord. Thank you. Question number 14. When was he placed into the tomb? Now from the sixth hour, they were, Matthew 27, verses 45, 46, 50, and also verses 57 to 62. And I'm going to read. Now from the sixth hour, there was darkness, all of, there was darkness over all the land unto the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. That is to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, saying the same thing, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, yielded up the ghost. When the evil was come, there came a rich man of Arimathea named Joseph, who also himself was Jesus' disciple. He went to Pilate and begged the body of Jesus. Then Pilate commanded the body to be delivered. And when Joseph had taken the body, he wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hewn out in the rock. And he rolled a great stone to the door of the sepulchre and departed. And there was Mary Magdalene and the other Mary sitting it over against the sepulchre. Now the next day that followed, the day of the preparation, you see, the next day that followed, the day of the preparation, the chief priests and Pharisees came together on the pilot. Yeah, so it was crucified the day before um, the preparation. He was placed in the tomb the day before the preparation, that's a Wednesday. It was six to the ninth hour, there's darkness. He's taken off the tomb on um, Wednesday night, probably about nine or couple ten, and placed in the tomb. And it was close to the crucifixion time. So uh, Joseph, Joseph Arimathea placed him in there, took him, um, bound up the body, wrapped him in a linen cloth, and placed him in the tomb. To, in, the, in the tomb. And that's why we got a lot of um, the Turin shroud. You ever heard that say about the Turin shroud? Yeah. That's supposed to be the linen garment that Joseph of Arimathea wrapped him in. That's supposed to have been found. That's what they. That's what they, they, they said. They people. But there is fact there's a lot of research that says it isn't the garment, and some say it is the garment. They was actually wrapped in um, and crucified in. And Joseph of Arimathea will, get, will receive his reward in heaven will be great because he looked after God Almighty. That's God. That was God on the cross, not a man. It was God Almighty on the cross. The blessing that Joseph Arimathea is going to receive of the Lord and has received already must be extremely great because he took the Lord's body and wrapped him and treated him good in his day. Looked after him. Yes, yes. He put him in his own grave. Now note, we, we, we see now that Jesus died the ninth hour of the preparation of the Passover and was placed into the tomb before the Passover Sabbath began, which began on the Thursday. Let's read on. Continue. Yes. Thank you. Question number 15. Therefore, how long was Christ in the grave? Now, Jesus was betrayed and crucified on Wednesday, the middle of the week, Daniel 9, 27. The middle of the week, on Wednesday, in the middle of the week, was placed in the tomb just before Thursday. Yeah? The past, just before Thursday, just before Thursday, the past of the Sabbath began. So it was placed in the tomb the Wednesday night, before Thursday began, before Thursday morning. Yeah? He remained in the tomb exactly three days and three nights, according to his own prophecy, and rose in the end of the weekly Sabbath. Thus he fulfilled all prophecy and became the first fruits of the dead. First Corinthians 15 verse 20 reads, but now is Christ risen from the dead 
and become the first fruits of them that slept. In other words, mean the first to be raised up in a physical body, never to die again. Praise the name of the Lord. What about Good Friday? This is question number 16. What about Good Friday and Easter Sunday? Well, both of these festivals are based on erroneous interpretation of the scripture. And now anybody, even a child, could, will, is able to count up and say, even a child is able to say, look, if you tell your, if you, if you told you, you got children here, if you told any of your children to, that's Friday night, Friday evening at 9 o'clock, to Sunday morning or Saturday early Sunday morning, Saturday night early Sunday morning, amount to three days and three nights. You try and persuade them that it amounts to three days and three nights. And they'll say, Dad, come on, Dad, wake up. How can Friday night, Friday evening at nine o'clock, to Sunday morning equal three days and three nights? It clearly doesn't. Clearly does not. Right? This, 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 now you ask a question, what about Good Friday and Easter Sunday? You see, both of these festivals are based on erroneous interpretation of scripture and stem from catechism. Christ's death is remembered in the Lord's Supper and his res resurrection in water baptism. Yeah? Yes. Yeah? So, 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 so the Catholics teach that Christ's death and resurrection should be remembered that his death on Friday and resurrection on Sunday. No, but Jesus said his death and resurrection should be remembered through the Lord's Supper and through water baptism. First Corinthians 11 verse 26 reads, First Corinthians 11 verse 26 reads as follows, For as often as ye eat this bread, this is, this is the Lord's Supper now, and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Romans 6 verse 3 to 11 reads, Know ye not that as many of us as were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death. Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also shall walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, that's through baptism, we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is freed from sin. Now if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him, knowing that Christ, being raised from the dead, dieth no more. Death hath no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once. But in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you. Question number, do you want to add it? Come on, no, no, continue. Question number 17. Is it important that we understand the truth about Christ's crucifixion and his resurrection? In regard to his crucifixion, the only sign Jesus gave to the Jews proving his messiahship was his three days and three nights in the grave. And since Christ did not rise on Sunday, this removes the main support for Sunday observance or Sunday as a Sabbath and rather establishes the sanctity of the Saturday Sabbath. God bless you, and I pray to you that that teaching has benefited you. You'll be able to see the teaching again on YouTube at acog7.org.uk. This is Pastor Ronald Lake coming to you live on Radio Kuskabu. Our web address is www.acog7.org.uk. God bless you.